Good morning from Amsterdam. Today I'm going to take you on a tour of the most touristy but also my favorite places in Amsterdam. I used to live in Amsterdam for eight years before I moved to India and this is the first time that I'm back in three years. So I'm extremely excited to go around the city, visit my favorite spots and maybe introduce you to some new spots. Previously in this From India to Netherlands series, I surprised my parents after three years of not having visited due to COVID. In the second episode, my friends got a massive surprise and I give a tour along some scenic Dutch towns. In case you're interested in those episodes as well, I've linked them down in the description below. In this episode, however, it's Amsterdam front and center. So without further ado, let's start our tour here at Amsterdam Central Station. Our day in Amsterdam starts at this incredibly famous Instagram spot, which admittedly is stunning, but the Grand Dame building in this area is of course Amsterdam Central Station. Finished in 1889, Amsterdam Central is built on around 9,000 poles, whereas the average house is constructed on around 10. Before we head into the city center, let's first explore a super upcoming neighborhood for which we have to take the ferry. <laughs> Amsterdam Noord used to be a place where you'd stay far away from as a native Amsterdammer. But with a new north-south metro and efforts from the municipal government, the neighborhood can be rightfully called the shortage of Amsterdam now. Despite the new convenience of the north-south metro line, I personally prefer the ferry because especially on a sunny day, the views are stunning, despite it being very windy. If it's rainy, I wouldn't recommend the ferry despite it being free, but you can sit inside and the benefits of the ferry are that you get stunning views on the Eye Museum. On a sunny day like this, however, it is a true treat to take the ferry and enjoy the views and the sunshine, obviously. Within 15 minutes, you can reach north and enjoy the hipster area. My favorite part about the Eye Cantina is the decor and the massive window. So even when it's raining outside, this is a cozy place to sit. Their food is delicious, even though the prices are really Amsterdam prices. It is good to sit here, catch up with a friend and just enjoy a cup of coffee while also being close to Amsterdam city center. If it's a sunny day like this with lots of fluffy clouds, the ferry ride back to Amsterdam Central Station will be an absolute treat. Viewing the city from the water like this is truly unique, so I don't think it's an experience that you should miss if you are here, but by now, obviously, I am incredibly stoked to take you into the heart of the city center and show you my favorite neighborhood. Before heading into the Jordaan, one of the oldest neighborhoods of Mokum, as Amsterdam is lovingly called by its locals, obviously we have to make a little Instagram pit stop at these famous homes. I am sitting here at a secret spot, I'm not going to spoil where it is, but obviously these houses are very, very popular for clicking pictures. I tried looking up the story behind them, but it seems like they're just regular Amsterdam warehouses, which are just chosen by tourists to be very popular for pictures. Obviously I understand why, because the water reflects the houses so beautifully. This is also a popular departure spot for the Amsterdam canal boat. So if you want to see the water peaceful like this, I would recommend you to be there definitely 9 a.m. at the latest. That way you can really see the reflections and also to click the best pictures, you got to go down this road and actually I'm going to walk by the spot right now. There you go. This is where you can click the pictures with the gingerbread houses, but actually I personally feel it's better in the Jordan. So let's go there. On our way through Dam Square, we're passing the Royal Palace, which is now used mainly for entertaining and official functions. You can also enter it as a tourist, but we're on our way to Jordan, remember? Welcome to my favorite neighborhood in Amsterdam, the Jordan. I used to live in the Jordan for four months and it was a total dream come true because the canals are the prettiest in the Jordan. They're almost stacked one after the other and nine out of ten times when you see those beautiful pictures of the canals of Amsterdam on Instagram, they are usually clicked in the Jordan. Hence why I wanted to take you around the Jordan and show you a little bit of this stunning neighborhood. But a little bit later on in the video, I also want to show you a hidden gem neighborhood that is almost as beautiful as the Jordan. I went to college there. I studied law at the University of Amsterdam, so I have very fond memories of that neighborhood and it is so close to the city center. 
Hence, I usually feel sad when it's skipped by tourists and I do want to introduce you to it a little bit later on in the video. But first, let's explore the Jordan. The Jordan was built in the early 17th century to house working class and immigrants. It's one of the oldest neighborhoods in Amsterdam and the locals even have their own slang and accent. Most canal tours spend a lot of time touring the canals here because the whole aesthetic of the Jordan is full of the true Amsterdam flavor. I'll take you back here for a lunch, but first we gotta explore a very authentic shopping area in Amsterdam. Pro tip for your Amsterdam visit, if you want to see the city this empty, you will have to start exploring definitely by 7 a.m. At 10 a.m. the shops open, so obviously the city center fills up. At 9 a.m. the workday starts, so if you're exploring between 7 and 9 a.m., actually between 7 and 8 a.m., you will kind of have the city yourself <laughs> as a amsterdam native i would definitely recommend everyone to explore amsterdam by foot but i do understand the appeal of the canal tours just realize that you're lower on the surface while you're touring the canal so you won't get as much beautiful views as you would get by foot by foot you might also catch some local vandals vandalizing the place these ducks seem very cute but just like the pigeons they're actually a nuisance because they how do you say that? Defecate all over the cars and obviously cause some damage. So even though they're cute, they're actually really vandals who have no shame. Look at them. A little heads up on the Negen Straatjes or the nine streets where we're heading now. It's a collective name given to the nine cozy and picturesque shopping streets in the UNESCO Heritage listed Amsterdam Canal Belt. Did you know vintage shopping is incredibly popular in Amsterdam? Vintage shops collect used goods and then resell them at lower prices. The two most popular shops for vintage shopping are Episode and Zipper. Next to being quite good for the environment, vintage shopping is very popular with Amsterdammers because you can find some really unique pieces and especially the leather goods are amazing when bought vintage. Now living in India, I know this might be quite a shock for Indian people because, you know, buying used goods Mm -mm, that's not a thing. Luckily, there is a lot more shopping that can be done at the Negen Straatjes. It's really a quaint shopping area where you can find some unique pieces and maybe also score some unique souvenirs. Also, a lot of local brands have a shop here. So if you're really looking for some authentic Dutch brands, then definitely come to the Negen Straatjes and you will be able to find them here. You can also find some great places for food here, way better than Leidseplein where we're heading to next. But first I have to take you to the ultimate tourist spot or the tourist trap I would almost say in Amsterdam, the flower market. For that we are passing Spui, which is one of my favorite places and opposite of that there are beautiful canals. I'm quite reluctant to take you to the flower market, but because so many tourists want to see it, I thought maybe you better see it in my video and then decide for yourself if you really want to go there. Despite sounding super fun as the only floating flower market in the world, the Bloemenmarkt is actually usually an anti-climax for tourists. Located opposite of the main high street shopping street, the Kalverstraat, the start of the flower market, yes, seems promising, but then you actually step into the market and you realize there's not that many flowers. I mean, if you're interested in buying flower bulbs, then yes, it might be exciting if you wanna grow your own flowers at home, but do check your flight regulations or your country regulations because very often you cannot bring foreign seeds into a country, especially if you're flying internationally. So yeah, I just feel this is a bit of a tourist trap and there's not that many actual flowers here. Don't worry though, the next tourist place is definitely 1010 worth it. To reach Leidseplein, we're going through Leidsestraat and this can be a very tricky street in terms of traffic. I'm going to show you in a minute what I mean. The Leidsestraat is one of the main shopping streets with some beautiful canals on the sides in between. However, seriously be careful of the trams because they go both ways here and what I mean by this is 
wow no tram and look there's a tram so you have to look left and right properly before you cross the street because the trams will go right through the street if you're a vegetarian there are quite some good fast food places over here but most people end up in a restaurant around lights plant which i would not recommend but i would recommend something else we are just around the corner from lights plant arguably the most touristy place in amsterdam you won't find many locals sitting here but it is definitely a melting pot because most of the tourists from all across the world come here to hang out and it is i would say the best place to party i have some very very fond memories of watching the sunrise after coming from a bar or a club at or around the lights of line so if you're looking for a place to party i would definitely recommend lights of line which is something that i always recommend to all my international friends visiting amsterdam because the bars and the clubs here are open on odd days and odd hours something that you won't always find around amsterdam but you will always find a party at lights of line <laughs> patiently waiting for those trams to pass because i'm taking you along one of my favorite places to party the paradiso to a very famous tourist place Het Rijksmuseum is an iconic building in Amsterdam and if the architecture seems familiar, well, it's made by the same architect that designed Centraal Station. Right here is a secret spot that I want to show you first. We have reached the Rijksmuseum and its surroundings. Now, this is one museum that I tend and always recommend to my foreign friends who come as a tourist to Amsterdam. The back of the Rijksmuseum is stunning with a beautiful water body, but then there are also the Rijksmuseum gardens. Real Amsterdammers will be mad at me for spilling this secret, but the gardens around the Rijksmuseum are freely accessible and they are usually not crowded at all. This was in the afternoon when the passage underneath the Rijksmuseum was getting fully crowded. Can you believe this is so quiet and so peaceful? There's actually also a coffee shop here, so you can just grab a coffee and sit in the garden. And especially when it's nice weather like this, it's fantastic. I'm going to show you more of these secrets in a minute. But for Let's have some lunch, right? For lunch, we're heading back to the Jordan area because we're meeting my friend Isabel Mosk. Isabel is a tourism marketing strategist and also a trend watcher, so maybe she has some cool recommendations for us. The first recommendation that she had was Kessens for lunch. During lunch, obviously I told Isabel about the tour that we're on now and I also asked her to give us her favorite place in Amsterdam. My favorite spot in Amsterdam is the Jordaan area and especially a shop called, a restaurant called Winkel where you can get the best apple pie, a hot fresh apple pie with whipped cream. Definitely put that on your bucket list if Isabel says that. But back to our tour, shall we? Where were we? Oh, the Rijksmuseum. Hello you beauty even if you don't end up going into the rijksmuseum the area around the rijksmuseum is just absolutely amazing to hang out at and because i love my bollywood let's get a little bit filmy shall we totally getting the Rani vibes from the Bollywood movie Queen, but it's time for us to move on. Now, if you want to hang out here, it is just really stunning. Just know it gets quite crowded, but on a beautiful day, this place is just a vibe on its own. However, if you want to know more about the Dutch history and art, I mean, hello, Rembrandt, just a little bit of name dropping. The Rijksmuseum is by far one of the top museums in the Netherlands. Spread over 80 rooms, there are 8,000 objects showcased that tell the history of the Netherlands and Dutch art. The outside of the museum is stunning, but I promise you, if you go inside, you can spend the whole day there exploring treasures. But in this tour, we are off to one of my favorite spots in the city by crossing the street and entering this cute area opposite of the Rijksmuseum, where I do need to warn you for an unwritten Amsterdam rule that might get you yelled at by Amsterdammers. Do not walk on the bike lanes like I'm doing here. Apparently not coming to the Netherlands for three years has made me unlearn my Amsterdam manners. Also, no matter how easy the Dutchies make it look, 
please please do not get on a bike as a tourist because this girl almost got hit and she is a local i can see that by the way she's cycling so whenever people ask me like how did you learn to cross the street in india i just need to show them this scene because in the amsterdam streets you can die five times just crossing the street so please stay on the walking lanes and stay safe walking around anyways is the best pace and way to see the city because otherwise you might just miss small scenes like this <laughs> This area around the Faisalstraat is really really pretty and you can actually find the gingerbread houses all over Amsterdam but I also want to take you to one really beautiful spot which is stunning when it's really nice weather. I'm just waiting for the comments of the Dutchies to pour in that I missed Rembrandtsplein but I actually made a very conscious choice to miss Rembrandtsplein and show you this place. This is actually right in the back of Rembrandtsplein. It is near the L'Europe Hotel and Café de Jaren, which are the best terraces in the city when it's really lovely weather. Ten Ten would recommend these, but you can also follow what the real Amsterdammers do and just sit on the kade or the edge of the grachten or the canals, bring a refreshing beverage, bring some snacks, enjoy, relax and watch the boats float by. I definitely didn't want to leave here because it was too nice to sit outside but our last final secret spot that I promised you at the beginning of the video is waiting for us. Right opposite of where I was sitting, there is a very special bridge. You won't see many of these bridges in Amsterdam and behind it is the place where I went to college, the University of Amsterdam, at least the Oudemann High Sport, which is a subsection of the University of Amsterdam. So come with me and I'll show you around like a proper University of Amsterdam alumni. This is actually a residence area. Please be a little bit quiet here. There are actually people living here, but behind it is the Oudemann the man has poor. By now, I can almost hear you commenting, girl, I understand you're nostalgic, but this is just a small square. Well, the magic is in the front. Look at this. And it is such a quiet part of town next to the city center that I actually found a bird's nest. There are also some bridges here which look very different than in other parts of the city. So this is a true Amsterdam secret. Can you hear that? barely any sounds and we are right in the city center of Amsterdam. I studied law here about 15 years ago almost. So I spent four years coming here for my workshops and I just loved coming in here after all the hustle and the bustle of Amsterdam city center, which I also love, but then coming here and experiencing the silence, studying law, which I really loved was just such a joy. The reason why I brought you here, obviously because this place is very, very special to me, but also because the area around this college, it's called Oudemann Huisport. It's a, it's a sub building of the University of Amsterdam. The area around Oudemann Huisport is actually very, very pretty. And not a lot of tourists make it on this side of the city center. So I thought I would just show you around so you can find the real hidden gem and get that insights from a University of Amsterdam alumni. <laughs> I also have an Amsterdam city guide and an Amsterdam food guide which I have linked down in the description below and you can continue watching now. <laughs> 